Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are around the world. My name is Linda Larson Schlitz, and I'm a counselor from Wausau, Wisconsin. Today I'm going to be talking about grief. I've got a friend who is struggling so much with the multitude of friends that he has lost, and we too, in the last year, gosh, I think six people. The older you get, the more struggle there is to, because the older we get, more people die quickly. So we are going to talk about how to overcome that, how to move forward. Grief is a normal part of life. We all go through it because we miss those people. But to get stuck in it causes anxiety and depression. And I want to help you with that this morning from the word that will give you some tools to overcome this. So let's start with a word of prayer. Father, we just thank you that you are the great healer. You are the one that can help us overcome the struggles in life and the pain we feel when we have lost loved ones, no matter how they have gone. We just ask that you would comfort those who are struggling this morning and you would give those who will be facing a death or a loss in the future we thank you for your grace in jesus name amen yes first i want to say last week if you're looking for the video interesting thing i preached on how to overcome satan and it disappeared it is nowhere to be found um, interesting but I did share another one a couple of months ago, so I will repost that. And boy, I'll tell you, this is a key to what we also need to be aware of, is that there is other spiritual forces out there that seek to steal, kill, and destroy, like I talked about last week. But Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. And when we're caught up and stuck in the muddy rut, I call it, of grief and sadness and depression over people that we have lost in our life, it is a really hard thing. And it causes us to be far less than what God intended us to be because we are inwardly focused on the sadness. So I want you to just listen to a few words of hope this morning and truly it does not matter whether we are struggling with someone who has died someone who has we have lost in divorce or um, we've moved and we miss the people that we used to live by it really doesn't matter what the loss or the grief is. If we do not have those people in our life anymore, we get really, we get really sad. There's like seven stages of grief, just so you know. Um, it, some people say five, so it kind of depends. But the first one is definitely shock. Um, when somebody passes, even though they may have been, uh, we knew that they were going to pass away, they had cancer, maybe they've been sick for a long time, maybe they're in a nursing home. But if this is a person that we have been close to, a parent, a sibling, a, a loved one of any kind, uh, we have to really think about how to, how to deal with that. And we don't know when the moment comes even though we have expected us it is still difficult to deal with it's still hard and we still have to go through that this can't be happening so that is definitely the the first um situation that we've got to deal with is that shock and then there are a, a group of other things that we may be coping with that come in different ways. Sometimes anger is one of them. Anger may come right off the bat, um, before shock even. It's like, how could you do this? Maybe somebody drank themselves to death. Maybe somebody committed suicide. 
or were in a drunk driving accident or had stayed with someone who they knew was violent that could potentially harm them. These things cause a lot of sadness and grief and anger. And so we've got to know that anger, if it manifests, becomes bitterness and bitterness becomes a depression eventually. So we get stuck in that. We have things like, um, it may be shock. It may be, uh, you know, that bargaining. So we got the shock, we got the bargaining. It's like, God, this, you know, how can't you do a miracle? Can't you bring them back? You've done miracles before. You've raised people from the dead. Or maybe we know somebody's on their way out. So we, we get, that's how the anger starts. You know, we're shocked. They've got cancer. Then they're, you know, it's like God. If you, if I, if I can trust you, you're going to heal them. And then they die, and it's like anger. The anger may be at the person. The anger may be at God. And then we slip into the depression because we don't know. We feel helpless. We feel hopeless. We feel frustrated. Um, what are we going to do without that person? If this is somebody that we have spent our life with, maybe a best friend, a, a loved one, a family member, a good friend, maybe it was killed in a car accident or something else, or worst case scenario, maybe somebody that we had something to do with, somebody that was riding in a vehicle that we were driving and responsible for, or I grew up on a farm, had tractor accidents. Terrible things happen to good people. And how and why, again, from last week and previous things, we have an enemy out there. God doesn't, I don't believe God makes people die or murder. God can work all things together for the good. So that's my first verse, Romans 8, 28. God works all things together for the good that um, love him and are called according to his purpose. Now it's hard to love God when a loved one has died, but if you have a history with God where you know that you have had the opportunity to spend with this person, this is something that you can reflect back on and be grateful for. And God will work it out. One of the things I've lost people, like a lot of them recently, but it is through these losses a lot of times that I'm here able to talk to you, able to say, hey, um, there is life after someone dying. My brother passed away. Um, several years ago, and from drinking, he, he was an alcoholic like me. I was fortunate. I was able to um, come to know the Lord in a personal way. I had people in my life that encouraged me, supported me, and I got involved in ministry right away. I got away from my friends who that was their life, and they were good friends, and I loved them, and I, I missed them terribly when I decided to walk away. That's another thing and a reason why some people don't stay clean and sober, which you know, this is one of my things I talk about a lot. When we know somebody isn't good for us because we're not living the way that we know we should live or that's healthy for us, it is really hard to walk away because we have friends and we don't wanna leave them especially if they are using, if they are in a dangerous situation, and we know that the end result, maybe they die, and then we're going to feel even worse because, oh, if we would have helped them, maybe they would have lived. But fact of the matter is, we have to, if we want to live, we have to do what God has called us to do. So for those of you who are believers, who are Christians, or who want to be, and have a better life, 
that is more fulfilling, that you can get over the hump of grief and sadness, then think about um, listening to some of these verses that will help you to overcome, like Romans 8, 28. Um, another one is Psalm 34, 18. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed spirit. So if you are crushed, sad, grieving, God is here. He is here for you. He will comfort you. We have to be willing. He will. He's near and he saves the crushed in spirit. But you've probably heard the analogy of the person who is is stuck way out on the water and they're floating on a raft and they they don't know what to do and they pray for somebody to save them so somebody comes along with with the boat and says hey i am here i'm here to save you and they're, they're like no i'm waiting for a ship and they're like but i can save you and they're like no I, i'm waiting for a ship and so somebody else comes along with another vessel and this is the way it goes we miss the opportunity to let god help heal us and get over this and move forward with the memory of the person the positive memory but we don't have to stay stuck because God has given us neuroplasticity, again, which I talked about for several weeks. And that means that these memories and these thoughts are in our minds, but we can change some things. If these things are so painful, they become like rotten potatoes and a bag of good potatoes, and the rotten potatoes crowd everything out because the good potatoes don't make bad potatoes smell better or taste better or look better. We have to choose. We have to make a decision to take those painful, awful memories that hurt us so deeply and we have to remove them because if we don't, the enemy will use those to push us into a negative thing. Now, I've also talked about the way our brain functions. We have these neural paths, and in those neural paths in our brain, we have memories, we have thoughts, we have experiences. And when those become negative and bad, it causes illness. About 80% of physical and mental illness comes from our thoughts. Think about that. That's why it also says <coughs> in <coughs> Romans 12, <coughs> excuse me, don't be conformed. Don't do what the world does, but be transformed by the renewing, renewing of our minds we knew we can start over and who does this by the renewing of our mind that we may do god's perfect will so if we don't choose to change our thinking we can do god's perfect will another favorite verse that you've heard me quote probably 90% of the times I have spoken every Saturday for the last two and a half years is Joshua 1.8. This book of the law, the Bible, should not depart from your mouth. How does something come out of our mouth that starts in our brain? We have to think it, then we feel it, then we speak it. Think, feel, do so if we're thinking god works all things together for the good for those who love him he works it for the good i'm like god works it for the good oh i feel so much better 
knowing God is going to work this for the good, and then what am I going to do? I am going to do something different than sit in depression, and I can't take it. Because our thoughts are, they are created, oh, the brain is so complicated. <laughs> it's like a computer, and that computer has got all these things going in all these different directions. And if we get a virus, things shut down like my computer has today i work for 20 minutes trying to get online but our brains we have a pain pleasure center and i hope for those of you who listen every week i'm getting tired of this but I, I i can tell you you need to hear it over and over again this pain pleasure center if we are feeling good thank god he is with me and he is going to save me and he is going to comfort me in my pain in my sorrow that feels good, oh, now I can move forward and I don't have to sit in that grief. That's the pleasure if we are thinking positively. If our thoughts are pain, oh, I miss him so much, what am I going to do? I don't, you know, I remember those times and how can I live without him? And you're doing that 20, 30 years later, then you haven't gone through this transformation. So we've got this pain, and our way of dealing with pain is to quick get some pleasure. And if people don't know how to transform their mind by relying on the Word of God, by relying on His power, by relying on the Spirit to give you the freedom to overcome this grief and sadness, then you're going to try and find some other quick fix. Because that's what we do as human beings. We don't want to do the tough stuff. We don't want to eat the healthy food. We don't want to exercise. We don't want to go through the feelings. We want to quick fix it with a drink, a drug, a sex, um, shopping, social media, gambling. This is how we get our quick fix because those things give us a hit of dopamine in our brain. Not because it's so good, but because our brain goes, oh my gosh, this is momentarily feels good, but it's momentarily. And what does that bring us? It brings us pain again. And then we're back on the pain cycle going, oh, I hurt so bad because I'm hungover, because I got picked up for drunk driving, because I beat somebody up or got cocky with the, the police when somebody reported me for being disruptive, and now I'm going to jail. Now I got a criminal record, so I'm back in pain. How do I deal with that? I get out of jail. I smoke a cigarette. <laughs> it, we flip back and forth like a windshield washer from the pain to the pleasure, from the pain to the pleasure. Some people never get out of the pain and they end up with suicide. This is not God's will for us. It is not his plan for us to go through this thing. God's plan for us is to do what back to Joshua 1, 8, which I didn't finish. This book of the law should not depart from your mouth, but so that you can meditate, meditate on it day and night so that you will be careful to do everything that is written in it. Why? For then you should have good success and then you will be prosperous. Simple. <laughs> if we do it. But if we don't do it, if we choose those memories that cause us pain, we're going to go on this windshield washer cycle of pain to pleasure, pain to pleasure, to suicide, to drugs, to alcohol, to violence, to um, depression, to anxiety, to illness, to migraines, to upset stomach, to ulcers, to heart disease, to all of these things that are caused strokes from us not being willing 
totally painful. How do you let go of somebody that you love? You hang on to the memory and you move forward to a better life. See, here's the thing. We have to create different memories to fill that because the brain shrinks. It shrinks if we if all we do is sit and watch TV or stay in our negativity, the brain shrinks and it doesn't function. We lose the memory. We lose the happiness. We lose the joy. We sit in numbness because we're not moving forward in the joy of the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord always, another scripture, and again, Paul said, I say rejoice. He is encouraging us to quit sitting in our depression. Rejoice in the Lord. Why? Because God has brought us the ability to overcome this negative negativity and overcome these things. Second Corinthians, blessed be the God, rejoice the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercy and God of all comfort, who comforts us in our affliction, so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. So if you are sitting in the pain and loss of a loved one, be it divorce or death or whatever, they moved. Bless be God. Rejoice. How do you rejoice when you've lost a loved one? By receiving the mercies of God and the comfort that he has given us in all of our affliction and pain and illness and loss. All of these things, we never have to sit in negativity and depression and anxiety, never. Because he will comfort us in all of our affliction. And then, so that, I love that, our pastor Aaron Winowiski, he, he kept hammering on that. The Bible gives us instruction so that there is always something that we do after we get a Bible instruction, after we get a verse. So we bless God and we accept his mercy so that in our affliction, we can comfort someone else. I'm in recovery from alcohol and drugs. I have been abused. I have gone through mental illness. I have gone through all kinds of other illnesses and pain. I've lived with people who are, are having lots of problems. I have been sad because they have died. My neighbor across the street, our good friend Mike. Um, so many people have passed away in this last year. Be and how, why does that affect me and how? what good is that? I have dealt with it so that I can help comfort you with the same comfort that I have received through our Lord. So if you think that I don't know, I, and none of us can know exactly what somebody is going through, but what I do know, that if we do what it says, and we accept the love of God, we can all overcome the grief and the sadness and the pain, no matter what it is, with the same comfort that God has comforted us. Matthew 5, 4. Blessed, blessed are those who mourn. How can we be blessed so that or for because we will be comforted? We are blessed because then people can look at us and say, wow, how did they get through that? People say that to me all the time. Now, I've been 
I've been reading the word and, and working this program or whatever you want to call it, discipleship, for 47 years. So I've got some experience. But you also know, notice, not because I'm so wonderful, and I'll tell you, if you ask me to memorize scripture of the day, probably wouldn't happen. But these are scriptures that I memorized over the years because why? So that I might be comforted. So that I can be a blessing to you. So that I can be a faucet of hope because Jesus, the living water, it says the Bible says Jesus is the living water, can come to you and in your thirst to start over, to let go, to stop grieving, to not be in pain anymore, so that you can be comforted. Trust me on this. God is here for you. He will comfort you in your affliction. Now, what I've done ever since I came to know the Lord is I have prayed, I have asked Him to speak to me. And I didn't always write down what he said, nor did I always listen because my mind goes a million miles an hour because I have ADD. Um, and what a blessing that is, because if I didn't, I couldn't help all those other people who have brain dysfunction and have a hard time remembering. But in that process, I started writing down my, um, my meditations and the times I prayed and asked God to speak to me. And I put 365 of those daily meditations in here for those that want to hear God answer life's toughest questions like, God, why do people die? If you can raise people from the dead, why do, you, why do people even die? Well, because God gave mankind free will to destroy ourselves, really. Um, and it's like, yeah, but that person was murdered. How did they do it? God gave us free will, unfortunately, to the person who also murdered that person. That's the thing. The devil is out there roaring around, like seeking someone to devour, to kill, steal, and destroy. And that's what he does. Kills people. He just kills people in all kinds of different ways, whether it's through illness or whether it's through something else. Now, what I do every week is I just picked this up like I just did. haven't looked at it because I was fiddling with my computer until 8.25. So I just grabbed this, looked up some scriptures quick, and off the top of my head, here it came. So no preparation. But I just picked this up and I grab it. I have no idea what I'm going to read. But let's see if this um, resonates in any way at all. So the top of... The, the name, it was from August 14th. The title is Stop Hiding from Step 10. Continued to take a personal inventory. And when we were wrong, promptly admitted it. So I talk about um, things that need to be cleaned up in our life. The scripture, finally I confess my sins you uh, to you and you stopped trying to hide my guilt. I said to my, I stopped trying to hide my guilt. I said to myself, I'll confess my rebellion to the Lord, and you forgive me. All my guilt is gone. Now, how can guilt be weak? I don't know, let's see what that is to say. What he said to me anyway. I understand his struggle. You are human, and it is impossible for you to be perfect while you're yet on earth. All I ask is that you continue to seek my will and acknowledge your sin when you have made poor choices and let me restore you to the unity you seek. I know it takes effort and focus, but it is what you were created for because, so that, the rest of the world is looking to you to lead them in a closer walk with me. And if you are not demonstrating that by a disciplined and peaceful life, they may not want anything to do with me because they will think that I'm not capable of helping people change. Your desire to do right is only possible when you rely on the Spirit to guide you moment by moment. Begin again at this moment. Today, 
is a new day. And my thing that I always add is my response. Am I going to listen to this? If God is telling me not to sit in my self-pity because I've lost someone, not to sit in grief, not to sit in a way of coping that is negative through alcohol, drugs, negativity, anger, suicide, or desire to kill myself. And then people look at me and they see, what kind of a God do you have that you are still sitting in this painful spot and not moving forward. People need freedom from their guilt and shame. And this negativity eventually does become, well, when it says rejoice in the Lord always, again, I say rejoice, is that a suggestion? Have no anxiety about anything, but in everything through prayer? And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep your heart and mind on Christ. Are these suggestions that if we want to be at peace, if we want to rejoice, if we want to let go and let God, if we want to, um, no, do it. So today, do it. Let go of the pain. Let go of the painful memories and the hurt and the guilt and the shame and move forward to create new memories in your neural pathways because those negative ones will dissipate. They will disappear. They will, they will go away. Not that you forget those people, but you forget the pain. It's up to you. Father, I pray that people who are sitting in pain and depression and they can't move forward will choose to make a new life and new memories and use their experience to create newness for others. In Jesus' name, I pray. God bless you. I hope you take advantage of what God is offering you through His Spirit and you find a new way to live through your pain so you can rejoice always, not just sometimes, always. God bless you.